here. Okay, more. Okay, we all we made it across on the lifeboats. Look out across the ocean and consider the journey thus far. Yeah, I agree. We do consider the journey thus far. Man, that last last time was a doozy with dealing with the the animals, the dogs, evacuating the camp, getting to the lifeboats. But it was good. It was all good. Um, I guess we enter the request tent for today. And take requests. Oh, there's Hammond. He doesn't have his uh, hat on. Did he lose it? Carpenter sent me. Says we ought to get building some sort of marker. Can't say I disagree. We've made it farther than anyone else. We'll take pride in. I'll get on your order. He leaves. In our interest is hold a small encomium, Captain. We have come so far, we should praise ourselves for accomplishing such an impossible task. We've progressed beyond the last known location of the Viscount. Answers to its disappearance may lie on this isle. Captain, once we are through here, I would recommend you to scout the area for any sign of human activity. For safety, of course. Uh-huh. Construct a site marker. Cross the ridge. Right. Lots of stuff here. I'll approach the engineer. You see the engineer tinkering away with some navigational equipment with his usual sour expression. He places the equipment on the side and lets out a grunt. Damn, thing still doesn't work. Do you think it could be the environment? Hammond gives you a sideways glance. Maybe. Couldn't begin to know. Not like we have any bloody experience for this. Not a bloody soul has come this far south. Who knows what's ahead? Having trouble? Kirk approaches a more noticeable limp on the man, forcing him to use his cane. What do you want? Still trying to get the compasses working again. Threatened that I might? Look on Kurt is one of hesitation as his eyes start around, doing all to avoid the gaze of Hammond. Uh -huh. I have something to declare regarding my previous action. Carry on, Kurt. Well, I believe that in dire circumstances, pride can often take the better of us. Stop stalling. What are you trying to say? I'd just like to apologize over our earlier scrap. One minute here. Carried away before, and I see it did neither of us any good. Right there. Not me to hold a judge, Hammond. At least fall trapped out in this cold. Enough of the appeals to spit it out, why don't you? We should be working together. More importantly, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. I apologize. Hammond pauses for a moment while looking towards Kurt. After that moment, he returns to tinkering with his equipment before finally speaking. Accepted. Excuse me, what's that? Apology accepted. So, can I expect you two to work together from now on? best we can, I don't think I have another fight in me, Captain. First and last, eh? Well, I've fought before. Could have fooled me. Well, I suppose I'll be off. Best of luck with your adjustments, Hammond. There's no chance of getting them working here, or relying on you. Trillic. When compared to your machines, I'm relying on you. Huh, I see. Kurt steps away, returning to camp at large. Okay, well, mark our journey. Read the inscription. Here we honor the crew of the Temperance who ventured beyond the Pale Passage and arrived safely. <sighs> Robin Shaw, Richard Templeton, Clive Hammond, Kurt Darling, Grimley Stoke, Junior Stoke, Lady Cordell, Dr. Arthur Nutley, Kasha Belford, I Andre Isaac, Dwight Glosley, Harriet Glosley, Vern Sheridan, John John, Timmy Ward, Skylar Pleck, Harold Turner, Tolson Higgs, Reif Joom, Doug Ward, Gareth Forsetter, Ricky Floggs, Hadrian Quilsey, York Moore, and Soren Killiper. Alright, well, I guess we, uh, we cross the ridge. And we don't have anything else we can do, it feels like, so. Inspect the cairn. 
Inside the cairn, you find a letter, some supplies, and a bolt action rifle. 40 food. Nice. To you who finds this message, here lies the final testament of the Viscount. We made our arrival on the east shore of the island. Before moving on, we established a cabin marked the landing point. There you'll find enough supplies to support a crew of 20 for a full year. While charting the perimeter of the island, the crew came across a cavern to the mouth of the central mountain. Captain Wayland decided to split the crew in order to chart the location further. His half have elected to enter the cave through the open stream, while we've been sent to mark the western coast on land. I don't trust the captain. His actions of late have been erratic, cagey, and he's avoided all questions from myself and the rest of the crew. Interesting. That's very similar to uh, somebody else that we know. Um, this behavior is only exasperated since encountering the cave enclosed is an instrument that may be needed in some time. If you find said instrument to be missing from this cairn, then you will know that the worst has occurred. If you're reading this in our wake, another poor crew sent to this isle, heed my advice. Turn back. There's something truly wrong with this land. It has felt the touch of the three sisters, cursed to swallow poor sailors whole. You are wise, you will not allow it to happen to you. Turn back. Signed, Bertram Reynolds, head scout of the Viscount. And this is just the same thing. Okay. Well. There we go. That is that. Um, we can't actually make the dude feel better, can we? Furnace cure freezing. At the very least, I guess we can do that. Just want to be able to do that once just to make sure um, we only have the one wounded person and this sucks if we can't actually heal them the crew have their meal the way of ease and rest falls over the crew safe and fed the crew looks to you tired and bruised Consider what words will bolster them. You all make your way to the marker. Like our marker? Their marker? Which marker? Can we like zoom out more? To get like a little bit of... Nope. Really can't. This is it. Alright. Speak to the doctor. Nutley approaches you. Captain, we've come a long way, haven't we? You've grown, grown quite a lot in that time, Nutley. Have I? Am I any taller? <laughs> before before we move on, there's something I have to confess. Something that I've carried on my back this whole time. I don't feel right keeping it from you any further, so... I allowed Captain Hunt to abandon us. Explain. When, when the ship was going down, I saw him. I watched as he grabbed his supplies and began to take off into the ice. He saw me, but I... But didn't say a word. He knew that I was too spineless to do anything. I couldn't even bring myself to tell anyone. He was right. I was too spineless. Until now, at least. And now you know. Don't care about your mistakes of the past. Learn from this and move forward. It wasn't your fault. Expect no punishment for this. Yeah. No, I don't expect... I don't care about the mistakes of your past. Learn from this. Move forward known better before, but you're right. I'm sorry, the truth had to come out. Do what you will with this information. I'll, s I'll accept anything you decide, Captain. Kasha and Kurt. Oh, she's her without her hat on as well. Everyone without their hats on. It's getting warm. Captain, is there something I should be made aware of? We're keeping no secrets, if that's what you're implying. Or what do you mean? What do you mean? Mr. Temple has been snooping around and interrogating me on my report. It seems as we approach rescue, he's taken himself to approve of what lies in my writing. He's taken it upon himself, correct? You didn't set him up to this? 
Templeton is acting of his own accord. Good to know. I'm no stranger to people who want to omit parts of my work. Saw plenty when covering the riots, but I have no intention of censoring this report. A story not based on the truth is worthless. Agreed. If I have to leave parts out or fabricate others, then was it a story worth telling in the first place? You could always gloss it up a little. Turn your head to see Kurt approaching, apparently having eavesdropped on the conversation. What do you mean? Well, a story can be plenty honest, but some require a little bit of polish. But your films, aren't they honest accounts of your expeditions? Ah, they were. Well, more or less. <laughs> I'm certain the films played up his heroics. Most of it was true, I'm sure. Most of it? I'm not interested in mostly true. You're right, Kurt shouldn't suggest you lie about this expedition. Don't be so naive, or I thought you of all people could understand the tricks a camera can pull. Kurt shouldn't suggest you lie about this expedition. I'm suggesting nothing of the sort, but I am no stranger to the world of show business. What is Kurt at now? Yeah, he's just slowly going down. I'd rather have her go up. What I do isn't show business, Kurt. It's journalism. I've been around lo both long enough to know they're one and the same. You should hear some of the tabloid rumors I've read about myself in my time. I may be better than the gutter press, Kurt. You've been part of countless documentaries. Surely you would care about presenting the facts. The facts are not immune to artistic license. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Certain cash has no need to lie in order to paint this crew positively. The facts are the facts, Kurt. If we look bad, so be it. Uh, that's just kind of it. Quite a lax look at your reputation, Captain, after all the work you put in for us. Why are you suggesting this, Kurt? I just feel we brave so much that we deserve a somewhat flattering write-up, so perhaps some omissions are necessary. Such as what? Many of the crews come from backgrounds best not shared with the public, and more has happened here than should remain on the ice. You, that private conversation with Nutley, you resigned yourself from the sale. Is that what this is? Will nobody know whatever health issue you keep under wraps? Regardless, that will remain under wraps. It's not for the public to know, right? I'm simply stating that for this kind of story, people reading want to be inspired. There's no reason to saddle them with the nitty gritty. I'm here for the story, the full story. No single solitary soul wants to hear the full story. Nobody go got into an Arctic expedition because they heard about the rest of us having this century. You just want to protect your own image, don't you? What? I well, no, it's nothing of the sort, but I'm no fool. I see exactly what you're trying to do. Let's not debate this matter. It can wait until we're on our way home. Kinda have a kinda like that one. Oh, this is important. I didn't think you'd be so concerned about your image, Kurt. Well, that's your mistake. Mistake? You can expect me to be the perfect role model you see in the films. I'm only human. I've been married thrice, hobbled once, and been plagued with every vice there is. But do I, what I do have is my exploits and my legacy. I w would wish you not to take that away from me as well. Kasha looks at you, her usual upbeat visage melted away into disbelief. I can't lie on your behalf, Kurt. I don't understand the power of optics. Every part of your report puts my livelihood at stake. Your livelihood or your image? Cool truth is, there's no difference between the two. You, Captain, do you believe this as well? Oh, I hate this. Oh, time we spoke on what is allowed in the report. Ugh. Hate that. I also hate you're free to publish as you please. As much as I want them to. We also need, like... Loyalties to stay up. Oh, this is rough. Kurt, leave us be. I will speak with Kasha. Maybe that's the best thing. Please, Kasha, take it into consideration. You, I can't believe you. Simply a matter of painting a more flattering picture. It's no difficult cask. Maybe not for you, Kurt. She storms back to her tent. 
As Kurt gives you an uncomfortable glance, the man looks shaken by the response and above all appears to be deeply embarrassed. Without a word, he staggers back in the heart of the camp. That's no good. Captain, you escaped the ice, we're on land. We are so close now, Shaw, so very close. We both saw that Karen, Captain, traces the expedition that came before us. We can still find the Viscount, our mission can continue. So... <laughs> Why is finding that ship so important to you? Because some things are greater than the lives of the individual. I've chosen to live that philosophy my entire career. I know that after all this time, the specifics of our employee may seem inconsequential, but tell me, Captain, do you think the Appertoons would pour all this effort, put this many lives at risk, if they didn't think there was something par truly paradigm-shifting at the end of it? You still have a mount to ascend before making that choice concretely, ask me again then. Don't think for a second that we aren't going to finish what we started. I'll make this clear, Templeton. I have no intention of recovering this count. Our survival comes first. Uh, well, our survival does come first, but we might still want to do that. Ask me again, then. Very well. We can discuss this further once we've traversed this mountain. He stops and turns before leaving. One last thing. What happened to your captain's hat? The dog ate it. Hmm. Uh, good times. Visit the marker. I guess we hold an encomium for the crew. The crew are all called together before you. You tentatively lift yourself onto a crate. Hush whispers roll through the audience. Kasha readies her ledger and pencil. They once again await your next words. How will you deliver them? Him. <laughs> As if nothing has changed since you last did this. With renewed optimism befitting a solid land, or with the inflict confidence in the impossible results you achieved so far. No, as if nothing has changed since you last did this. Yeah, let them see any cracks. Continued further fervor needs to come from somewhere. If you're that fountain, perhaps it may trickle down. The crew look up to you. We should all be well acquainted by now. Um, we should all be well acquainted by now, to be honest with you. I never want to be the captain of this expedition. Never expected to be the captain of this expedition. I've tried my best to rise to the occasion. Never expected to be the captain of this expe uh, expedition. And breathe a sigh of relief. We've made land. There are indeed several heavy breaths released among the crew. A silent moment of reflection passes. Only sorry that Cord Cordell's kennel could not make it with us. I really am. Cordell gives you a small nod to you and thanks. Kurt speaks up. Our words, not work's not finished yet. We still have a mountain to scale. Also that cairn from the Viscount. Cross that path of safety, a cabin with enough supplies to last us until rescue. Temple clears his throat. What is our current priority, Captain? No matter what, we must scale that mountain. We will know our next course of action from there. Kurt gives a nod. The assurance of solid ground seems to stir to those listening. Well said, Captain. Indeed. Well, we don't have much time. Best be moving. Back to work. Crew are granted the time they need before they eventually disperse, returning to their roles at camp. And that's that. And hopefully, yeah, you're dreaming you're back on Temperance. Wake up shaken. Lovely. You awake shaken. Literally, by the engineer. That is hilarious. Uh, that's that's funny. He stands over you, bug-eyed. For a moment, you think you're back on the temperance. Hammond? Shaw! It's Cordell. What about Cordell? Uh, 
There's food and supplies missing from the stores. I think she's trying to make a run for it. Um, lead the way. After getting up, the two of you... I don't think that's locked. After getting up, the two of you charge out of the tent into the snow. Found tracks leading, heading up towards the mountain pass. Oh my god, they gotta... Come on, come on. Oh my god. They need to make this easier to do. Follow the tracks. You follow the tracks away from camp. It's half an hour before you finally spot her ascending the down dead mountain. Shh, there she is. Um, let's approach slowly, follow my lead, go back to camp, I'll handle this. I'm not letting you screw this up by yourself. God's fine, let's approach slowly, follow my lead. That's an order. I kind of don't really want Hammond here, but that's fine. Let's approach slowly, follow my lead. Both creep towards her silhouette. And we'll try to get closer. Cordell picks up the sounds, slowly turning back around to spot you both in her line of sight. She clears her throat. Captain Shaw. Hammond. To what do I owe this surprise? Don't play coy. We know what you're up to. And you seem to be several steps ahead of myself. What am I apparently up to? Please educate me. Getting a head start on tomorrow, scouting, a fine idea. You know full well why we're here. Getting a head start on tomorrow, scouting, a fine idea. A fine night for it, yes. And a fine story, but I don't think either of us believe that's what I'm doing. Stanberry's expecting. Then you should do what's best for those pups. What does it look like I'm doing, Robin? If you leave, you're ensuring their demise. Perhaps, but there's more of a chance out here than with the rest of you. I'm not going to allow Stanberry and I to be a part of this expedition any further. Do you really think the two of you will be better off without the rest of us? I do. Those puppies will be my new letter. I'll start over. Certainly not the first time I've had to do that. You're going to have to shoot me before you leave. I propose a duel. You should have come to me first, Cordell. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I hate that one. You should have... Come to me first, Cordell. You're gonna have to shoot me before you leave. I propose a duel. I'm just in. I'm just interested in that one. I don't know if that's actually what I should click. You know what? You're gonna have to shoot me before you leave. I propose a duel. I mean, it does make sense that she'd want to. She looks to the dog, then back to you. Very well. She readies her weapon. Stanberry stops growling. The woods are silent. You can feel the night snowfall landing on your nose. Don't fire. Draw and fire. No, I'm not going to shoot her. You get one shot, Cordell. Make it count. Don't fire. She snaps her weapon too and fires. Your left ear explodes. Oh, look at that. I've lost an ear. The world spins and you find yourself lying in the snow. Pain shoots all around your face. Cordell, you didn't shoot? Was never going to shoot you. Your attempt in speech is lost as the pain tears across your face. Yep. Your cur curse shoots out through the silent snow. You didn't shoot? Why didn't you shoot? <laughs> it's never going to shoot you. I told you before, you're going to have to shoot me before I let you live. Leave. <laughs> Can we please just all go back to camp now? She puts down her arms and walks over to you. The three of you begin the long trek back to camp. Stanberry follows patiently. Not a word is spoken on the journey back. Well, that was interesting. And now I don't have an ear. Week 39. This is actually week 39? 
because last time it wasn't actually that. Kasha, careful. You turn your head to spot Kasha perched precariously over the edge. Why would you be doing that? Um, her camera in hand, lining up another shot from her position. It's a great shot of the horizon. Trust me, you've got a good shot of falling to your death. Get back over here. The ground isn't safe. You can't trust anything beneath your feet this high up. Kasha doesn't heed the warnings, instead lining up the shot and snapping it cleanly. Oh, crap. There. No issue in this just... Might be the banner image of my report. If the civilian is done feeling foolish, might be carry on. Cash nods and turns back around to join the rest of the crew, only for her to slip on the ice beneath. You lunge forward to pull Kasha forward so she isn't hurtling over the edge, but her initial stumble sent the camera falling below. That was a close one. My camera! Be thankful the camera took the plunge and not yourself, young one. By reassurances, Kasha moves back to the edge of the cliff, peering over, searching for her camera. I can't lose it. Everything from this expedition was on there. Wait, I see it. Nonsense, it's a blip on the rocks. You can't see the ground from this distance? No, it's not on the ground. It's snagged on the ice. It's not too far down. I can climb back down and... Uh, why? Why are people not smart at times? Um, that seems like a very, very terrible idea. Not a hope. You want to go back to climbing? If I lose that camera, my entire reason, reason for being on this nightmare goes with it. <sighs> <sighs> uh, feeling we're gonna have to start thinking about um, what do we do here with um, <sighs> okay I'm getting that camera he turns to you. Captain, we have to do something. It's just a camera, Kasha. You still have your notes. This is your mistake. If you fall to your death, it's your own damn fault. Not putting anyone else at risk. It's just camera, Kasha. You still got your notes. My notes aren't enough. The world needs those photos to believe this. Aren't they? You have the testimony of the rest of us. The story comes from you, not that machine. Kurt steps forward. I'll do it. <laughs> Fine, but be careful. <laughs> Have you two gone mad? <laughs> oh my God. Wait, I like this one. Um, no, you won't. Fine, but be careful. I'm coming too. This is my fault. Be safe with me. <laughs> I mean, no, I meant the man with the years of bloody climbing experience. Hey, very well. Curta fixes the rope to Kasha, locking her in tight with the climbing gear. Leave the climbing to me. As a civilian, your safety is top priority. I suggest rethinking this plan of action. We cannot afford to lose our navigator. Because I'm the navigator, I'm going down. If I can't save that camera, no one can. That would be the preferable option. <laughs> Kurt pays no heed to the protest of Templeton, continuing to climb down with cash in tow. Thank you. Don't thank me until the job is well done. Bad luck otherwise. They're risking their lives for a bloody picture. You should stop the Shaw. Let them go. Kurt and Kasha, I mean, that camera is quite important. Kurt and Kasha begin to slide down the wall of the cliff at a steady pace, Kasha keeping her eyes on the camera at all times. Easy now, easy now. You can do this, Kurt. Reassuring yourself isn't very reassuring to me, you know. Okay, I think I can get it from here. Think. Both of you, please don't make any rash movements. She collects the camera. There we go. Now back up here, madman. Job well done. So much for bad luck. Yes, now let's climb back. Kurt begins to adjust the lines on his 
climbing gear preparing to lead Kesha up, but the extra weight from the camera causes the rock beneath Kurt's feet to crumble and the former film star goes hurtling back. That's not good. He snaps to a standstill, the line between himself and Kasha is still intact, but the weight of the big man's fall put, pulls Kasha back from the face of the cliff. Blast! Kasha, are you alright? I... I can't see the cliff. What's happening? This blasted line won't hold with me. Pull us up! The rest of the crew hang back, lest any added weight at the cliff's edge cause an even more dire incident. You look down and see the pair flailing helpless. Kasha spots you. Captain! Um, command the crew to start to pull them both up. Crew scrambles and starts pulling the rope up. No doubt the dangling weight of Kurt is also putting strain on the back end of the rope as it's tied to a jagged rock at the peak. This rope beginning to fray at the edge, so does Kurt. The navigator pulls out his knife. Kasha! He looks down at the man as she shouts. I've always promised myself I'd lose a few bastarding pounds, but late for that, I suppose. Take a photo. What? Take a photo of me for prosperity, once in a lifetime shot. No! Do it. Um. Don't you dare, Kurt. He isn't listening. You can pull her up, Kurt. You can do this. You see a twinkle in the man's eye. You really believe that, Captain? <laughs> Don't leave me up here with Templeton, you cry. <laughs> You're Kurt. Of course you can. Uh, Don't leave me up here with Templeton. <laughs> I do like that one. That is hilarious. Stop wasting time and get to it. You're Kurt, of course you can. He puts the knife in his teeth. He starts to swing his immensely press of weight. As he reaches the mountainside, he takes the knife and cuts his line before gripping the side of the mountain and returning the knife to his mouth. He begins to climb. Hurt. Navigator responds to the metal in his teeth. They faked this stunt in my third film, but it's worth a shot now. Kasha silently prepares the camera for a photo. She daren't, daren't use the flash. The man climbs until he's beside Kasha. He takes the camera from her and continues gripping the mountain. Pull the rope! Heave too! Crew begin to pull the rope. Keep going! Kurt, Kasha, and the camera. Jesus Christ. Are all pulled to safety. As they reach the peak, Kurt bursts into relieved laughter. Don't laugh! That was terrifying. We made it out alright, I think. Still, that was, well... Just like the movies. This is all quite daring. Might we move on? Glad you both made it out. I was so worried. Can't believe the show business fake would actually be daring. I barely believe it myself. But it happened. And believe me, this will be a full page in my report. And I don't require the credit. Stop the faux humble, Kurt. You're allowed to be proud right now. You're a real hero. That's a little intense, to say the least. Move on to the peak. The crew finally crest the mountaintop, grabbing everyone's attention is a cave in the rock wall. A cave. A good spot, some shelter from the winds. Still, what lies inside it may prove a danger. The crew gets to work setting up camp at the peak of the mountain. Camp is set up. To their quest tent. Find Kasha carefully inspecting her camera. It still works. Would have been a shame to lose it this far in. We should be grateful nothing more important was lost. As Kurt approaches, Kasha lets out a small chuckle. Yes, I suppose I should have my priorities in order. Well done, Kurt. That was almost a disaster. Please, let's not heap praise, Captain. It was all instinct. Ahem. There's something I should say. Past comments I made. Forgiven. Don't allow me to be a 
to apologize first. No, I understand now. Can't convince me to lie in my report. I'll tell the entire truth. I understand. The truth is that Kurt Darling is a true hero. You didn't say that. I've caused my fair share of trouble on this expedition. Yes, I don't intend to hide that from anyone, but your heroism is more important to share. What did you tell me about inspiring others? Thank you. I only hope another young Kasha Belfort reads my report. Deserve to be commended, Kurt. We don't deserve anything, Robin. That shouldn't be our motivation. Chasing glory has been my vice for too long. Whatever you write about me has my blessing. There, I can expect honesty. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Crew need fed for the week. Yeah, we have nothing. <laughs> Give us something to burn. Nope. Give you nothing too, because we've got nothing. So I guess we enter the request tent. It's just Templeton. Captain, it is time. We're at a crossroads and the decision needs to be made. Both read the cairn. We both know the location of the vice count lies in this cave. We are this close. Our mission's end lies in wait. What do you expect to find there? Answers, for better or worse. What we read is it correct. The shore cabin should hold enough rations to last us for a full year. For the risk of missing a single rescue ship, I think it's worth it. We should secure that cabin first before returning. Right, of course. But this mountain is perilous, Captain. Can we survive a second trek? Inform the crew of our movement as soon as you leave this tent. I know you'll make the right call, Captain. So I have a feeling we're going to have to either... Well, we'll have to do a few things. I imagine... I imagine... Um, I don't, I don't even know. I actually don't imagine. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that we're going to need to focus on survival rather than the vice count. I mean, there's the view of the shore, the cave entrance... Approaching, oh, not Lee and Kasha, the brothers, navigator and engineer, approach scientist. Okay, not Lee and Kasha. Past the tent. Oh, interesting. And are quick to notice what's going on. Kasha and the intrepid photographer standing close to the doctor, their faces pressed closely together. She alerted to your footsteps and opens her eyes, eyes which quickly widen as you're spotted. Quickly, she and Nutley pull away from each other, their heads nervously swiveling around the tent, Nutley letting out a punctuated cough. Captain, you could have cleared your throat or something. Uh, we were just, uh... <laughs> I should have expected this with two entries. Uh, sticking together for warmth, a clever decision. <laughs> it, yes, quite clever. Very, very clever of us to be doing that. That is definitely what we were. Arthur, I think our good captain was joshing us. That or, cap or Shaw is quite dense and that would be a greater issue for us. Congratulations both of you. Oh, thank you Captain. We should be thanking you Shaw. Placing us together in one tent for a year certainly fostered conversation. Ever considered myself a matchmaker? Matchmaker. Spoke at length at first about his unexpectedly vast knowledge of ice fishing. And ending with casual conversation about our favorite newspaper strips. It wasn't entirely casual. What do you mean? Aha, I knew you didn't notice it. Notice what? 
Kashi clears her throat before putting on an affected voice, dramatically quoting her past statements. Why, doctor? I think you would be a great subject for my next report. I'm sure you wouldn't mind a write-up on your interesting life. Handsome young medical prodigy. You must have a bevy of suitors. Doctors, this... There's this excellent seafood restaurant in the capital we should actually eat there when we return to land. She chuckles to herself. Used we, for goodness sake. I was beginning to think you were oblivious to all flirtation. I recognize some of it. I was just too nervous at the time to respond. Though it's true, I did think you were just passionate about seafood. Expect nothing less from you. Or end then? We can help ourselves. Honestly, I deeply admire her passion for her craft. That strong way of thinking and how she was focused on her future. Everything I wanted in myself. He admired his courage up, went up against his fears in possibly the worst situations possible. That's the kind of thing they make films out of. And just as I thought we were winding down, I told her I wanted to see her again after we returned to civilization. Suffice to say, it was surprised he would just blurt it out. I surprised myself. For that, I had long stopped considering what, that we'd make it back. Of course, that led to a new conversation all through the morning. Where we knew it, having a romantic embrace at the south of the world. It was until you walked in, Cap. Yes, it was rather an inopportune of you. Don't take issue with this, Captain. So when will you be holding the wedding? Uh, excuse me? Ha, ah, good one, Captain. Presuming all goes well, of course, not for another year or two. Or five! Now, Doctor, you know me. I like to live fast. Five years is fast. I could whittle you down. I'm joking, of course. It's far too soon to speak on that. Well, for better or not, we're at the end of our journey here, I hope. Matters of the crew in the past to sail home, Gasha. Well, it's something to look forward to. It's been quite a while since we had that. Agreed. Wish you both happiness. It's what you deserve. Thank you, Captain. Now, if you'll excuse us. For warmth, a uh, fine love on the ice. Interesting. Okay. Navigator, engineer, scientist, kennel master, and Cordell. You, I wish to speak with you on a matter. What matter? Turning your report. But simply, I have a story for you to include regarding who I am. You're a kennel master. That's true, but not the whole truth. Well, this is sudden. I've been curious about your past. No doubt you were. Cordell turns to Kasha as the reporter quickly scrambles together her notepad and pen. Now, I'm certain you've heard him call me Lady Cordell. Yes, frequently. I asked around. Apparently, it's a moniker granted to you due to how you spoke. Well, those who dummy with that name have no idea the irony in doing so. The truth is, I am a noble. Or rather, I was. What? Suspected you might have had an upper-class background? Suspicions have not done you wrong, Shaw. I was born and raised within the nobility. I'm going to call you a liar, but that's just a big claim. Ingrid Cordelia Weston. What? You keep your ear to the ground often? I'm sure you've heard of her. Yes, actually, she's a distant relative of the monarchy. Had a seat as an MP for a brief period. Went missing unexpectedly. Well, I am Ingrid Cordelia Weston. Not just nobility, we're speaking to royalty. You notice a frown oh, of annoyance in the face of Cordell, or rather, Ingrid. Distant relative of royalty. Oh, shouldn't have chose that one. Should have let her just talk. That would be, the would-be monarch is a cousin of mine. But yes, that is the reason for my past position. I have all the proof I need to show you. No need, I believe you. You do? It'd be certainly an odd thing to lie about. Assume you're aware of the political system, Kasha. To no end, researching it was possibly the most dull and harrowing part of my last report. And yourself, Captain? Vaguely. Well, then allow me to refresh your memory. Well, as a distant cousin of said monarch, I was placed in one of those parliamentary seats. As you can imagine, I had no interest in being an MP. My aversion towards human interaction was no different in my youth. The age I received my first dog is a gift in the childhood. I much preferred their company. Surely there was once a time when you weren't such a recluse. Well, you've encountered and interviewed many of the nobility in your time, correct? Correct. Do you choose to spend your time amongst those people? Fair point. So this whole time we've been traveling with a runaway MP? Yes, I suppose it does sound quite unusual. 
I've learned not to be surprised at this stage. But why did you leave? The reasons for that are quite simple. I refused to live that life any longer. In that world, in my position, certain things were expected of me. And with decorum, attend every social event, keep your real self hidden until you're considered suitable to be shipped off into a political merge. Grim reality, one I wanted no part of. My choice was clear, and I didn't hesitate in my thought for a moment. I left home in the dead of night, taking only two things with me. My certificate of birth, for reasons more practical than sentimental, and my dog, for reasons more sentimental than practical. Started a breeding kennel in the capital, and the moniker of Lady Cordell among the common folk, and from then I was free, free to feel the ground beneath my feet. As Cordell speaks, Cash intently takes notes. I see, so trapped in a restrictive role in society, you broke free of your chains, yearning to be independent. I suppose, yes. It's like a wild pack of dogs, able to roam free. Please do not include a surface-level poetic interpretation of my actions. Poetic sort of my calling, but okay. No, that's good. Keep it. <laughs> There's no accounting for taste, Captain. I think I'll respect Cordell's wishes. Though I do think, with enough rewrites, I can make it sound great. I doubt that. Thank you for sharing, Cordell, but why have you shared this with me? Why now? My report will expose your identity to everyone. Why would you allow that? Because I trust you to tell my story, and I no longer have anything to hide. Thank you. I promise I won't let you down. I'll tell the whole truth of your tale. I know you will, assuming you have... You leave out that tripe about wild dogs and yourself, Captain. Speaking of dogs, how is Stanberry? Faring well. Still pregnant. What? Stanberry is pregnant? Yes, quite fortunate for me. What happened to my kennel? What do you intend to do with the litter? Tendo, I'm replacing the kennel I lost piece by piece. Stanberry will birth a new generation of sled dogs. Will be continuing your line of work? Yes, I'd much sooner rather begin again as a kennel master than return to nobility. Agreed, so that's your entire story. More or less, yes. I'm sure Captain Shaw has no objection to this tale, let's say you, Captain. Never would have expected, thank you for sharing. Appreciate your listening. Can't believe you trust with us. Thank you, friend. Now let's take this for closeness. I simply trust your credentials enough to consider you a professional, but you're welcome. Who else do we have? The scientist? You find the crew's science officer overlooking several petri dishes containing various materials picked from the walls of the cave. Curiouser and curiouser. What's curious? Captain, observe the materials who uncovered just the entrance of the cave. Copper, tungsten, antimony. These there are deposits more likely found in lakes, not all in the cave. Let alone in a mountaintop cave in the polar region. Nothing about it seems natural. Could this be why the Appertons were looking for this area? Perhaps. Captain, may I ask you a question? Go ahead. I assumed you must enjoy my questions at this stage. You keep humoring them. Well, regardless, we have been working together for quite some time, and that time I've been able to evaluate you. After assessing your abilities and your decision-making, I can safely conclude you are more than capable in your role as captain. As such, I'd like to offer you a job. You wish to work with me again, Templeton? My wishes are irrelevant. You are more than qualified for the role. I can easily recommend you to company head. Time I told you the truth of who we were working for. Even more you haven't told me. Beneficial keep cards close to my chest. Until you were fully evaluated. Reveals a tin can of rations fashions sit over you. The woman modeling front stares back at you before you look back to Templeton. What am I working for the model? Yes, actually. Her name is Minerva Apperton. She's the president of the Apperton Tinning Company. But why would she fund this expedition? Same reason anyone would. Tin Foods is perhaps lowest priority with the company in today's age. You can likely tell by this shoddy work of our rations. 
That said, Lady Averton is focused on turning her company into the only option in commerce, which is why she sought after the expedition of the Viscount. She's interested in what the Viscount found in the ice. And just what did they find? No doubt there are several details Minera has kept hidden from even myself, but I'll tell you what I can. The original expedition of the Viscount was carried out by the government, a race to find the southernmost point of the world, charter it out in the name of glory and science. But upon our arrival, it appears they discovered some strange environments, as we have, and they so choose to investigate instead of heading back. And contrary to legend and hearsay, it wasn't the cold and the starvation that drove the crew mad, it was what they found in there that took their minds. And how did we know this? There was a witness, a survivor washed ashore. Half mad, their tongue cut out, they lived only long enough to give us a hint as to what we're looking for. That sounds terrible. It's unknown what exactly lies in wait should we find the Viscount. But from what we know, the crew of the vessel found something world-changing. There's no mere measure, or this is no mere treasure. What they found was unnatural in nature, a paradox existing at the most southern point of the world. Whoever can retrieve it, bring it back to civilization, will shape the path of human advance for the next century. Hearing that, I believe I'm underpaid for a mission of this magnitude. Yes, I can assure you a greater rate of pay should we be able to recover the secret of the Viscount. I cannot forgive being kept in the dark like this. I was hoping you would understand my perspective. It seems that your thoughts are clouded. I've told you all that I know. Please leave me to my research. Turn, but Templeton speaks one more. Oh, Captain, I never officially responded to my offer. Ah, I will take it under consideration. See that you do, Captain. What is he at? He's probably been lowered down. Well, oh, actually, not too bad. So Grimly, Hammond aren't at the top of the top. But that's okay. Let's talk to navigator and engineer. You notice Hammond and Kurt oh. <laughs> around the boiler, deep in conversation as you approach their heads perk up, noticing you. Captain, didn't see you there. Well, geez, Captain. Seems we both were caught up in our work. My work? You're just watching me, Kurt. But you did manage to pick out the materials. We're just replacing the spyglass I cracked on the mountain. May not be of any use in the cave, but you never know when we might need it next. Aye. Once again, my boiler comes in handy. What do you make of this cave, Kurt? It's not one, no doubt. A lot of questions we shouldn't be answering. Our priority should be get to shore, not go spelunking. Coming from you isn't the point of your <laughs> films. On hearing that, Kirk puffs out his chest. Oh, so you've seen my films. Just the one. And what did you think? Pure bollocks. <laughs> Should have figured. Tripe is kinder than... <laughs> I haven't seen enough to judge. You've never seen my films? Well, I hope you would amend that once we return to our civilization. I just can't get over all the inaccuracies in them. What inaccuracies? You make me for a fool, Kurt. I know a stage shot when I see one. Well, they certainly did clean a lot up in the edit. I don't get it. Don't you understand, chum? You're a proper bloody navigator, Kurt, and a damn hero. I've seen it with my own two eyes. Thank you. Why do you star in all those phony films? I wouldn't call them phony. Well, it may not be the picture of accuracy, but they have the power to inspire people more so than any true story could. The real experience is more valuable. There was a time I'd argue against that, Captain, but this expedition has been one learning experience after another for me, and I owe a lot that to Hammond. Me? Yes. You've done an excellent job in humbling my ego. Well, it's a massive ego, to be fair, hard to miss. Arr, isn't that the truth? In fact, it's clear that if there's one thing I'm in need of, it's someone who can keep me grounded. Get to it, Kurt. What do you want to say? I was wondering, would you consider? Fit it out, would you? Alright, would you consider joining me after this on further expeditions? As an engineer? Yes, but also as a level head, I need someone like you. Think about it, Kurt. Perhaps I could join you both. Ask him for a job, Captain? 
the three of us on the same crew again, it's bound to go horribly wrong. Perhaps, but I think our ingenuity will help pull us through. Hammond pulls up a replacement spyglass. Anyway, here you are, all finished. Incredible. Great work, Hammond. No problem, Kurt. Kaharanga. What? My real name. Kurt's just for the media. Alright, Kaharangi. See you around, friend. You too. Alright, you two. You overhear the Stoke brothers engaged in what sounds like an argument. What did you say? Sorry, Grimly. I can't fool myself any longer. Let's face it. Hunt abandoned us. Wrong. That's all you have to say, Grimly. We've been out here so long. He left without a word. He left us to die, to be torn up in a blizzard, to be eaten by a seal, whatever else. He didn't care, did he? You don't know what you're saying. I know Hunt better than you, Junior. The captain would never... He's not our captain. What? <laughs> like, I'd so much rather be on Junior's side. But I also want to get, like, his... Um, his uh, loyalty up more. So I wonder if there's... If we side with Grimly here... If we side with Grimly here, will there be a chance that... Um, that he can get up to high loyalty? Take it easy, men, Sutton. Nothing is certain. Nothing. There's something I know for sur certain, Shaw. If it wasn't for Hunt, if we wouldn't be stuck here. He did this to us. Fine. Grimly storms off, marching towards his tent. Junior only lets out a sigh in response. Oh. Okay, I thought there'd be more to that that we could do. The view to shore. Abandon the mission and seek the rescue ship. Or... The cave entrance. You notice the companies are pointing directly towards the cave. So here is probably the biggest, biggest choice in the entire thing. Now, do we just say screw it all and go in? Or do we go um, or do we go down and say don't go to it? I mean, we have to go and see what it's all about, right? Even if we all go mad doing so. I think this is probably, this is probably the intended way to go. A commitment kept. The dark cave network reveals itself into an opening the light well we found it there it stands before you the Viscount where it was left by its former crew but not as it was left the ship stands quite different indeed snow filtering in the grotto seems almost frozen in time the weather itself remains fixed in all this impossibility sprouting from the great lost ship snap to attention you cannot afford to lose your focus the expedition's goals and reach after five years no six after the most roundabout road possible you finally found it
gods. It's... You're uncharacteristically lost at loss for words. You continue to stand in awe of the ship. Neither of you can come to words staring at the frame of the ship before you. There's uh, this down here, which I don't like. My word, this is... It's... Kasha beers. You lost for words. She slowly raises her camera up and snaps a photograph of the ship. My goodness, would you look at this. In all my years, never have I seen something like this. Remarkable, beautiful, amazing. Sure is something. The impossible lies before our very eyes. A reward for those who brave the land of no return. Shaw, could it have been all worth it to find this at the end of our road? My goodness. Shaw, despite the vegetation of this count, looks to be intact. Couldn't hazard to get my hopes up, but remarkable. Truly remarkable. Captain, we must study this at once. I was concerned, Shaw. Sorry we not might find anything at the end, but this is more than I could possibly have imagined. How could something like this exist out here? It's it's just not possible. Believe your eyes, Doctor. Well, grimly, it looks familiar, doesn't it? Aye, a tree in the snow? The fruit of the three sisters, right? That old tale would keep me up at night. Careful, Shaw, there's many sailor songs about this. None of them good. Awfully superstitious, don't you think? Any good sailor would be. Sides, we're looking at it now, aren't we? What the? Am I seeing things here? You are not. You gotta be joking. I know, this tree. The tree? I don't give about some bloody tree. What? Then what are. The Viscount, look at it. It's. Seaworthy. You know that from a look? I know every inch of it. It's just like its twin. We can sail this. Captain, this is truly a discovery for the ages. We need a moment to collect our thoughts. In no circumstance is anyone to touch that boat. For all we know that plant could be poisonous, we need to practice extreme caution. Well, you're the botanist, aren't you? Take a look at it. Grr, bark, bark, bark. Stanberry, please. No expert on plants, but something about that thing unnerves me. Don't trust it for a second. We need a proper assessment of that tree, Templeton. We should focus on setting up camp before we do anything rash. Indeed. Well, we should not lose focus. The crew get to work setting up a makeshift camp at the side of the ship in the grotto. Captain's cabin. Can't talk to anyone. It's locked. Nothing else here, so... Man, the art in this game is so nice. This end below. How could you sail this? It's got a freaking tree growing out of it. Inspect the organ. I don't really like where this is all going. Boiler room. The heart of the Viscount. A corpse. An old skeleton in what appears to be his captain's uniform. Their bones have fused the roots around it, clearly being here for some time. Inside their coat, you find a ship's key. The engine of the Viscount. The classic retrofitted steam train model twisted amongst the roots of the tree. Nothing else here that we can really see. Okay. Unlock the door with the captain's key. You enter to find a ghost sitting before you. Littered around the room are countless fam familiar scrawlings. Um... Yeah, let's read the page. Crew wanted, able-bodied crew for dangerous expedition, months of darkness, low wage, slim chance of safe return, glory to be had in the event of success. She must not have it. Always stick in the ice? Always stuck in the ice? Ink. I don't, I don't know what that says. J 
Junior, Grimley, Cordell, Hammond, Templeton, Kurt, Arthur, Shaw. Interesting. So how many expeditions they've been on? How many? I don't really know. Speak to the old captain. The, was it an actual ghost or is he here? You wouldn't happen to have a light, would you? Thought you were dead. Not dead. Not quite alive either. Somewhere in between, I think. You have a lot to answer for, Hunt. I'm sure you have infinite questions. He looks up at your head. I suppose you saw my hat on my way over here. Dog ate it. Wasn't that something? Huh. Never liked that hat anyway. A bit agonizing, don't you think? How's my ship? Right where you left it, give or take a few leagues beneath the ice. May the seas soothe her spirits. I hope she puts up a fight. I suppose it's wrong to call her my ship anyway. Remind me, Templeton told you about Minerva, no doubt. What exactly do you know about her? Minerva's story is rather tragic one. Are you sure you want to hear it? Yeah. Beautiful beyond reproach. You'd swear you'd never seen someone so idyllic. Anyway, the young starlet found herself at the helm of an illustrious stage career. Following that came business officers, offers, modeling, advertisements, and of course, love. Well, doomed love. She's widowed, you see, but not before winning the heart and hand of a son of a little tinned food company. How did he die? There's rumors she killed her husband, I'm not sure. Maybe he choked on a peach. Might have taken Minerva the rest of her life, but, well, let's just say the Appertons have a hands on a lot more than peaches these days. Why the secrecy, then? This Kent's expedition was a government affair. A deduction would say that Minerva liked to keep whatever she finds for herself. Get ahead of the game, as it were. When we first met, you mentioned it was a research vessel. What was it researching? Ah, it's questions of my own that I need to answer first, Robin. Now I want to know, which Shaw is speaking to me right now? Robin Shaw, who else would it be? Huh. How are the Stoke brothers faring? Why should you care, you imagine? You abandoned them? Alive and well, no thanks to you. That's good to hear. You made land after the sail, I assume. How's everybody else? How did you fare on the ice? Not telling you anything, Hunt. Of course. Of course. I'm sure you're wondering what led me here. You might be able to tell it isn't a particularly hopeful answer. I failed my men. Let him continue. Well, there was the four of us, as I'm sure you quickly figured out. Smurf, Corvid, Joe, and myself grabbed what we could and headed off with one of the larger lifeboats. We needed that boat. As did we. We couldn't have made it this far without. Smurf was the first to go. They knew what they were doing. They made their choices, and now they've passed. Be more specific, Hunt. I need details looks wistfully at the table. The custom of the sea occurred. What do you mean? Corvid's idea. There was protest, but after we learned the tins were poisoned with lead, we had no choice. There's always a choice, Hunt. The other two argued over partaking, Smurf refused and said subjecting himself to further tins. He didn't last long after that. Prince Tower on the fourth day and attacked us, then froze himself. Corvida and I made it to the mountain, and then she made the impossible choice. She offered herself to the mission. Man goes quiet. Can't get the taste out of my mouth, Shaw, no matter what I do. You're pathetic. You don't understand, Shaw. Every time this happens, my road always leads here no matter what. It always leads to this. Seen that tree outside, haven't you? A fruit? This is all for a fruit. Huh. 
You know it's not just that, don't you? This is what the Appertons have been after. We're here for this. All roads lead here, Shaw. What's so special about it? I've eaten of this fruit countless times, and yet I'm still here. I've heard this conversation countless times, a different me, a different you, but the same. We keep coming back here. Do you regret your choices, Shaw? Remember, you told me the sign of a good leader is understanding. You still stand by that? I do. That's commendable, Robin. The worst thing of any of us can do, Robin, is become the consequence of somebody else's plan. Maybe you've been the best Shaw you can be, maybe not. But you still can be, he gestures towards the fruit. With this, you can go back. Change the path to me. Speak like you've been in this cave for years. I haven't, and I have. Every time I've eaten this fruit, every past loop becomes freshly back to my mind, and then I send my mind back once more. You can do the same, Robin. You can go back again. You won't really remember, but part of you will try, want to try something else. Some things will stay the same, we always get stuck, the temperance is always lost. But you can save lives, save rations, perfect your leadership. If you eat the fruit, that is, open that eye of yours. Oh, that seems like a terrible plan. Um, so I imagine this is... So, talking about in-game. Now, the, the custom of the sea, um, that's cannibalism. In case you didn't understand that part. So, he basically ate the other three people. Which is sickening. And that's why I called him pathetic. And why there's always a choice. Secondly... How I perceive how this works. Um, if we eat this, we'll be able to go back to another save, or like a point in time in the save tree, and be able to like branch it out, maybe try something else. I don't want to do that. I feel we've got the entirety of the crew alive. Everybody's happy. Only one person wounded at this point in time. The loyalty, other than Grimly, everyone is completely loyal, and that's, honestly, I think that's almost impossible. You probably have to do everything insanely 100% correct, and that's okay. So I don't trust it. My path is settled, Hunt. Well, at least this means you're proud in your choices. We should head out, Robin. We have people waiting. I understand. It's been an age since I've seen my crew. Oh, but before we do, that tree out there, do you plan on taking it back to the Ampertons? I don't know. I'll need the crew's input. Of course. Me, on the other hand. I'm still making my mind up. Ready for the big reveal? What should we say? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. I'm eager to see the look on Templeton's face. Well, is this how many times people have died? I wonder if he's been here so many times. Address the crew with Hunt. The two of you pace towards the rest. Temple is the first to notice you. As predicted, the look on his face is a unique concoction of shock, anger, and mortification. Templeton, I appear to have found your lost captain. Aye. Other heads rapidly turn in your direction. One by one, they abandon their work and rush to assemble to see the site themselves. We certainly have a lot to clear up before we continue. Aye. That's a bloody understatement. Bloody hell, it's actually him, walking corpse. The others begin to mutter frantically. Hunt? You're still alive? Ah. The doctor made it. Good, I need you to fix up my teeth. Excuse me? He survived this entire time? I'm going to struggle to convince my people my report is true at this rate. This is uh, quite the shock. Hunt whispers to you. I knew the look on his face would be worth it. But uh, perhaps you'd like to 
clarify our situation. I, I'd like to know what happened myself. Guys, is that Grimly? It's good to see you again. Where are the rest, Hunt? The rest, Smurf, Corvid, Joe, where are they? They didn't make it. All these years, just like that, they're gone. Did they at least receive good deaths? As best they could, Grimly. Now's not the time to dwell on those gone. Captain. Yes? No. Captain Shaw, how in the world did you find this man? Captain Hunt is indeed the only survivor of those who left us. He has since partaken in the custom of the sea. I'm not lying to my people. Those who know what that means exhibit reactions. Others are left confused. Hunt looks at the ground ashamed. Those familiar should need no further clarification. The worst outcome to a situation that he is alone, that he alone is entirely responsible for. Yeah. Murmuring shoot between the crew as those aware whisper the meaning to others. Has he enlightened you on to why he left? So you were right, Shaw. The bastard abandoned us. Emmons right. Why'd you leave, Hunt? Show some respect. No. I remained unre <laughs> I remain unenlightened. Well, he wasn't here to destroy it. Captain, I think we it's time we open the floor to the rest of the crew. Something tells me many of them have words to share. Junior takes a run at the captain before being held back by his brother. You left us. Why? I didn't plan on going home. None of us were going to come back. That's it? And why couldn't you bring us to? Why even plan that? Do you want those answers, Junior? Stop defending the man. Why didn't you trust us, Hunt? Why didn't you tell them, Hunt? They've served you for years. You never did? Or you're lucky he didn't. You don't want to have taken his path. Man, these are all good options. Why didn't you tell them, Hunt? They've served you for years. It's more complicated than that. I do trust them. I do. But you're both young. I had to take the oldest, my top men. We aren't your top men? Well, that's... For all this time, we had the wrong idea, Grimly. I have nothing left to ask the captain. Hunt, why did you bring me aboard this expedition? Excuse me? Doctor, it's hardly time to work out your insecurities. The floor is open, Tempton. Quite so. Hunt, I've been asking myself that question since you left. Since I saw you leave. You... Pardon you what? You saw Hunt leave and you didn't stop him? Couldn't stop hunting his men, what does it matter if he saw him? It's in the past now, we won't hold that against you, Arthur. I know, but he still needs to know. <laughs> I remember that. He looked like a frightened deer when you saw me ready to go. Is that why you brought me on board? Because I couldn't stop you? Because I was young, naive, easily manipulated? It is, isn't it? Hunt tilts his head in confusion. Hells no. Oh? No, it's a favor to your father. He's my barber. That's it? That's the entire reason? Ah, he's very good. He asked me to toughen up his boy a bit. Seems like I've done the trick. Cash lets out a small chortle before covering her mouth to stop herself. Arthur did that himself. To be honest, I was worried from the beginning my father was involved. After all that's happened, I'm actually really... <laughs> Relieved the real reason is so benign. This entire time, it didn't matter. Put more thought into why I was here than Hunt ever did. The doctor has no choice but to laugh at the absurdity of it all. You know, we have a point at hand. Anyone else apparently requires psychological evaluation? You turn to your crew, find yourself face to face with Hammond. Starts past you to confront Hunt. Enough bloody games. You should have gone down with the ship. That's tradition, you coward. Tradition would, would want us all dead? Best not to follow that now, I think. No more jokes, Hunt. Hammond's right. 
Watch your mouth, Hammond. Boat Hunt watches himself. He left us to die. Indeed, to pick and choose when tradition matters is shameful, no? At least Shaw sees sense. Crew are still looking to you to make sense of all of this. Is there anything you want like, to add, Captain Shaw? Take so long to come clean about events past. The rest of the crew are still watching and waiting. No, about our benefactor. Their name is Minerva Appleton. She owns the, app, the Tin Food Company. The Tin Food, as in the peaches. It's been an age attempting to uncover information of this mysterious benefactor. You mean tell me that we're eating from their tins this entire time? Curious, why would a tinning company invest in such a mission? Ridiculous. It seems our are our captain suffering from some kind of delirium. The temple company? Absurd. Don't deflect. Tell them why the Appertons invested. Because best we decide our next course of action. The boiler does not have much life left in it, correct? Answer the captain. I'm curious to know what you're up to. So, so ridiculous. I'm not up to anything nefarious. In fact, I'm not truly really say that myself why this mission was invested in. Such information was kept even out of my reach. The rest of the crew, crew still watching and waiting. I think we've all heard enough. I'll wait around here forever, Captain. The ship, this tree, is our next course of action. About time you told them about the tree? Hunt, what do you know of this? I'm sure you're very interested in knowing, Richard. Anyone would be. This is what your employer seeks. The fruits of this tree, it changes everything. It will change the world. The fruit? Yes. Taste the fruit countless times. I've seen countless paths to this moment. My word. He's truly gone insane. Surprised the man lost his mind. Isolation out here. It happened to anyone. Is it insane or not? If this tree is unnatural. There's something wrong with it. That much we can agree with. It's fascinating. Listen to me, the hell's with Appertons. They can't be allowed to have this. Nobody should. What are you suggesting? It needs to be destroyed. Burned to the ground. What? Hunt, that's quite possibly the most important discovery of our age. It needs to be studied. Bearing that, we're hired by the Appertons to retrieve it, not to decide your own ethical judgment. See? Hunt is actually right. This thing cannot be allowed to exist. Allowed to exist? Do you hear how drastic that sounds, Shaw? Regardless, I'm the captain of this expedition, and my word is final. Long silence falls amongst the proceedings. Rufus Hunt, you are not the captain of this expedition. What? Then who is Shaw? Ah, Shaw is the first mate. That was a temporary agreement. I returned and reclaimed my role. Fortunately, Hunt, we read our contracts quite thoroughly. Templeton produces his copy from his jacket pocket. In the event that the Captain C is held in contention, the correct course of action is to hold a vote. Any offer of the crew may put themselves forward to claim the title. Then that's what we'll have. The crew should decide for themselves. Vote. I welcome it. The contract also states the candidates should put forward their selection of their for their first mate position. The selection of first mate is followed to make their case to the crew in open form as to why they should Select the paired candidate. Ha, good luck with that. Let's get to it then. Come on, you lots of captain's vote is require requires a deck. Board now and let's end this. It's getting a little crazy. The crew tentatively board the vessel proceeding commence. Vote for Captain C, I guess. Do we get to choose who we want? Jeez, look at this crew. But, like, look at this. Look at this. No need for introductions. It's such good art. We're far past the point for that. There's so much I've seen in all my days. Leading vessels like this, the sorts you lot would hear songs of and doubt every word of. But what I've seen here goes far beyond any of that. What stands before you is so much bigger than any of us. I've walked this path before, 
so many times. Half of you can attest to that. Understand if you look at me as a deserter, a coward, a traitor, you have every reason to, but you should ask yourselves where you stand, where you took, where your road took you always here with me. Even in my absence, I've always led you to where you needed to be. Hunt clears his throat. He still has blood on his freaking beard. Hunt clears his throat before pointing to the tree. This thing is an abomination. The power it holds is too great for any one person to possess. Hunt holds up the fruit. You should hand this quite literal fruits of our labor over to the employer who would have us die out here for their gains. The employer who would not even entrust you their name. An employer who would leave us out to die on the ice that would refuse to send rescue. There was a murmuring between the crew at the implication that a rescue ship was not sent. Robert Shaw was a fine officer, but Shaw could only hold down the fort in my stead. Shaw did not weather the sea, did not discover the Viscount. I did. You should judge Shaw in the officer's own words. When last spoke on the temperance, Shaw told me that the mark of a leader comes in understanding. I ask you, do you feel after all this time? Robin Shaw truly understands every one of you. And I believe it's my time for my first mate to say a few words. Grimly, he steps up. I'll keep it short. Can't remove his hunt as a man who I would trust with my life. Always has been. Junior and I were but lads. He took us in. We had nowhere else to go. Since then, he's been our best captain we could have worked for. Shaw couldn't live up to that standard. If you trust me, you should trust Hunt. Grimly, you're such a jerk. Thank you, Grimly. I believe it's your turn to speak, Shaw. Hunt's already had his chance to speak, now it's your chance to refute his words. There's stillness in the air. You have traveled so far with the screw, now they stand. All seem to be hoping that your next words will instill them in confidence and assurance that all time spent with you has been worth the trouble. You pause, collecting yourself for a moment before making your first statement. Let me be clear, my opponent is a man who has committed the worst crime imaginable upon his crew. You may not see me as a perfect candidate, but I have not, nor will I fall so far as Rufus Hunt. I believe the key to a true leader is understanding. I like to think I've come to understand you all a great deal in our time together. Yeah. I may not have always displayed as much, but I've learned from each of our interactions. We have come together like a well-oiled machine. I'm proud to call you all my crew. We've come together like a well-oiled machine. I'm proud to call you all my crew. See before many different faces from many different backgrounds. We stand on the precipice of one of the greatest discoveries. Through it all, I've always had your best interests at heart. I see before me many different faces from many different backgrounds. As a mutt wash, I never felt I belonged anywhere until now. All of you, this crew stands as a community unto itself. Crew look around, examining each other, taking a moment to consider the souls who have traveled with them to the ends of the earth, the souls they intend to travel back with. I haven't had a bad word to say about this lot. Frankly, their music is some of the finest I've heard the honor of hearing. Thank you. I've had my views on these people for some time, and I see how, how now how, that I was wrong. Here we are, brothers in arms. Aye, whatever I thought about land lovers, imperialists, that doesn't matter anymore. We're all one crew, aren't we? Your thoughts turn to the Viscount and this tree sprouting from its back. You must make your intentions clear. This tree cannot be allowed to exist. I fully intend on burning it to the ground. Yeah, 
and the time for fear is over. Let us all stand united and plunge ourselves head, head first into the depths. Who will, achieve, who will I choose to be my first mate? Junior, Kasha, Dr. Nutley, Hammond, Kurt, Cordell? Who do I have the best loyalty with? I'm really thinking Junior. Or Cordell. I mean, Junior has half of the crew. with him. But I really don't want to put him against his brother, right? Definitely not Templeton. Sorry, Templeton. <laughs> if I choose Cordell, she'll probably be like... She'll probably be mad at me. Kurt? Perhaps? It's like Kurt or Junior seem to be my, my top two choices. Or even Doctor. The Doctor himself. Oh, this, this is surprisingly one of the hardest choices that I've had to make in this game. Like, it's insane. Um... What, what do we do here? I think I choose Junior. As a first mate, I think he's would be phenomenal for it. They nod back at you. Junior steps forward. All my life, I've never turned another captain other than Hunt. Until recently, I thought that would always be the case. Huh. Seems like Shaw made it a mission to prove me wrong, and I have to admit, I was wrong. I look a fool standing here defending someone other than Rufus Hunt. I'll have to look like a clown if it meant I was finally speaking the truth. If I can't trust any Hunt anymore, nobody could. And there's not a soul here stupid enough to ever trust a snake like Templeton. Every week it was Shaw keeping that hoosh pot full. Every meal you ate, you would thank Shaw for. No one else, not even me. Lads, I'm not going to tell you how to think, but the choice is obvious, isn't it? As he steps back. Start the voting process. That's not surprising. be fair, it's fine. Other than Runt. I'd like Runt with us, but you can only do so much. There you have it. Congratulations, Shaw. I knew you could do it. Thank you, I suppose. Forced the vote because I had to be sure. Yep, Shaw. Honestly, I always thought I had a nice ring to it. Hunt's still here. <laughs> I want to hate him, but honestly, I pity him more than anything else. There's no reason to let him go, though. I know Hunt can be dangerous. I saw on that myself. Well, Shaw, you're the captain. What should you do with me? We hand him. He'll be taken back to land as a prisoner. It will put me to death now. I'll doubt I'll receive a softer sentence on land. I've got stories about plants like this, Captain. The sword is written in song. None of them good. It could be coincidence, but I wouldn't want to show anyone this. I wouldn't even want to get close. Well, I'm just the first mate. Real decision's up to you. The tree cannot be allowed to exist. Good idea on destroying the tree, but there's a problem. You've noticed the ship just so happens to be attached to that tree. But it burns all the same. If we set fire to it, we're losing the viscount. It's seaworthy, we'll be throwing away an escape.
We have an alternative in the life, but we can't even trust that the Viscount can complete its journey. The sacrifice we have to make we can allow anyone to get their hands on this tree. You're right. Okay, we'll get to work. Crew get to work setting the tree alight. It's so beautiful looking. You watch as eventually the Viscount begins to burn in turn. All that leaves is our exit strategy, Captain. Can't go back the way we came. At this rate, can't meet with the rescue ship. So, what are we doing? We'll send an envoy out on the lifeboat, one who can flag down the rescue ship and meet them here. Your final decision regarding the ship and its fate must be decided. Speak to Stanbury? Arf. Let's pet her. There's no reason ever not to. So we have to send someone out to help. To be honest with you, Shaw, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this madness. While I doubt such knowledge will be out of our hands once we return to land, correct? Still, I suppose it'll be proud in our discovery. We wouldn't have made it this far without you, Cordell. Or Crean, or Rosa, or Pascal, or Stanberry did not accomplish much on my own, Captain. Thus, my kennel be remembered. It will be odd to return to land. My name will be in the paper soon, no doubt. I'll be recognized for my past. Well, Stanberry Fern. Much more excited to return to land, I believe. We won't need to deliver her pups on the ship. I believe I'll find a new home to start over with a new kennel. Done as much before, I intend to do so again. Any luck? We'll not meet again. Been good knowing you, Cordell. Has been. Interesting, Robin. Promise me you'll take care of yourself. I have a lot to write on our sails back, don't I? Still can't believe it. Just watched it burn to the ground, and I still can't believe it. But now, we just have to wait. Let's hope the rescue ship can be flagged down. Fight all our bad fortune thus far, I think we'll see rescue. We sure do include <laughs> that quote in my report. It's funny, Captain. The reason I took on the story, interest in exploration was waning. I grew up on the stories of Kirk Darling. These great explorers were like legends to me. I didn't want that passion to disappear. The thought we'd stumble upon a great discovery of our own. You're one of those great explorers now, Kasha. Your name will be in the history books. That is bizarre to think about, Captain. Regardless, I hope you continue to thrive, Shaw. You deserve that much. In fact, remember to keep in touch with me, especially if you have a good story to share. They'll write, they'll write books about you one day, Robin. I know I will. Might as well throw any script I've been working on out, Captain. This is far more fantastical than any film. Find the Viscount, find that tree, and our one last bet on a humble lifeboat. My word. I think you've got the story for your next picture. Har, I wonder if we could land the funding. Oh, I just realized, my career as a navigator is just about over, isn't it? You reached the last great uncharted part of the world. You know, when I grew up reading about the great explorers of old, I always had dreamed I would be the one to plant the final flag. Maybe an old man with a limp and no flag to place, but I managed it, didn't I? There's always more world to discover, Kurt. Hmm, you're not wrong. This is the last great discovery we know of. But who knows what's out there? Who knows, maybe my exploration days are over. Now it's as good as any to call it a retirement. I am still raise funding for the field. I want to leave folks like Hammond behind there. Maybe. Maybe I'll move to theater. There's some stories I want to tell. Not about this expedition or any. About home. About the lands I left behind. You've more than earned your rest, Kurt. Thank you, Robin. I should take all this as a sign to wind down. Always be in contact if you want to work together, Robin. Make sure we do, no matter the medium. It's like everybody but Grimly, eh? I can't believe it burned, like any other tree. One less thing to worry about, Captain. Still, what a fascinating thing to find. 
not too happy about relying on a lifeboat every chance we miss rescue. Feels like a dream, doesn't it? This whole expedition fellas felt like a dream. Hard to be surprised anymore. Regardless, I'm looking forward to a normal meal for once. If I see another penguin seal or tin can peach, I think I'll hurl my guts, Captain. Though we'll be dining on plenty of fish for the next sail, I imagine. You worried about Hunt? Rufus? That man pulled us from a life on the streets. Despite it all, I'm always going to feel bad for him. I shouldn't own my life, should I? He took his path. Stay in contact, Robin. If you ever sail out again, let me know. I'll be happy to work with you. This is it, eh? We've got one last gamble on our hands, but I never thought we'd make it this far in the first place. Turns out, what do I bloody know? Not much. No better than the rest of us. You've proven that enough. Aye, sure I have, but it makes me wonder, what else am I wrong about? What else are you wrong about? Always had a clear head on that sort, you know? Never thought a bloody tree would ruin it. Well, it's ashes now. Aye, don't blame you for that either. I was scared of it myself. I've served on a lot of ships in my time, never once liked the one in charge of them. Military captains ranging from self-important useless to drunk and self-important useless. No offense to yourself. Didn't have high expectations for Hunt, had lower expectations for someone he tired. Another thing I was wrong on there, you're alright, Shaw. Is there a proper rest once this is done? Perhaps you can get some sleep for once. Nah, to be honest with you, I like the work. I take Kurt on his offer, working with him seems a better gig than the Appertons. Robin, if you're heading on a ship again, let me know. I'll be right there boarding with you. Never knows you can be Connor without me. Oh, Captain, I must be honest, it's a shame you chose to remove the tree. I understand, fear of the unknown is a great one, still I think possibilities with this discovery were endless. I don't. I think it's... You have rumors of people and see things where there are people have gone mad, lost their tongue, things like that. You get rid of it. <laughs> you don't need a curse. Um, it's out of our hands, but to make it this far. Still, despite it all, I have to commend you, Shaw. You've done something remarkable here. Sorry, Templeton, but the danger outweighed the benefits. I'll have to take your word on that matter, Captain. I've always fancied myself as an expert, Shaw. I'm sure that comes as no surprise to you. Of course, the ex of our expedition, well, it's become clear just how little I truly know. To be honest, Shaw, that excites me. I'm excited for what lies ahead. No doubt there's still a great deal still to discover out there. Perhaps you won't set fire to the next day. great discovery, Shaw. We more expeditions, and everyone will accept that this tree is the only of its kind, and I would be inclined to agree. Be the forefront of such a discovery, I had my doubts once. I certainly had my doubts on you, Shaw. I've never been more happy to be wrong. If we have a chance to work again in the future, our lives may be quite busy. That too, Templeton. Well, I can say with something with certainty, the future is unknowable. Take care, Robin, no matter what happens from here, take care. Captain, can't believe we made it, and yet, we still place our hopes on one lifeboat. Kurt knows dope coming up with a perfect poetic phrase before we set off. It is rather poetic, isn't it? Can't say I disagree. You know, I still thought it was all hopeless, even after leaving you that letter, I had very little faith in survival, and yet, People are relying on me, Captain. I can only hope I didn't let them down. Be happy to work with you again, Arthur. I would too, but I can assure you I will never be sailing again, ever. I've had more than enough for one lifetime. I never felt good enough to carry my father's name, but now, well, thank you. Keep in contact. If you need a haircut any time, I'll let my father treat you in for free. Okay, let's send an envoy out search for a rescue to bring back we choose or is this just it oh it's junior okay out on the ocean again nothing like the fresh sea air to whip up an appetite 
Don't see a damn thing ahead, Captain. Well, at least I have a break from cooking from that lot. Now their lives are in our hands. Worried about the responsibility? Used to keeping that lot afloat, same as yourself. Never had doubt in keeping being able to cook. This feels less in my control, Shaw. Cases out onto the water. It's been quite the trip, hasn't it? Just the open water. Still waters. You're a good captain, Robin. I'm sorry it took so long to mention that. And you're a damned good cook. That's for certain, no dispute in that. Thank you, Rob. I'm sure you're sick of my cooking by now, but maybe I'll get to whip something up for again before we're dead and gone. Come on, let's find that rescue. A week's hard sail finally gives way to land. Lifeboat makes port. Exhausted you and Junior spot a building ahead. Hmm. This is intriguing. Some weeks later. And here it is, the final draft, ready for publish. We should be with it tomorrow's copy of the Daily Appeal, right? What am I looking at here, Belford? What's this? Is that a treat? You're looking at the story of the year, chief. Of the decade, even. Maybe of the century. You think people are going to believe this, that you really found a tree growing in the coldest part of the world? We'll have to. We've got the pictures to prove it, don't we? You disappear for a year and come back with this, I figure you've finally gotten yourself killed. I came close, but no. I'm afraid you haven't seen the last of me yet. You're something else, you know that. It scares me sometimes. We'll have this in the next copy. Soon, everyone will know what you found. Can't wait. Kurt, you bloody idiot. <laughs> what is it, Clive? I'm left-handed. I'd throw a punch with the <laughs> left hand. But with the current blocking, it looks better if they throw with their right. And change the bloody blocking, then. Ah, right you are, Clive. Your attention to detail is impeccable. It's what you pay me for. Can't believe it'll jump two weeks and the tale of the temperance. Our tale will be on stage. Look at this. Our old scrap up just as I remember it. But you remember it's got more holes in it than cheese. <laughs> Perhaps I'm getting up there in years. A good thing to grow old, I've learned. Don't you think, old friend? I, I do. All right, all right, who are the full fry? That's funny. Patron raises their hands. Here, Junior, who's the musician? Now, can't you see the resemblance? My brother, Grimly. Tell him to keep it down if you like. Not at all, not at all. He's doing a tremendous job. Ha, you hear that, Grimly? Aye, aye. Always humble. Please welcome Lady Ingrid Cordelia Weston. Cordell, here's the gala. To the shock of many, a dog follows her at her side, the woman gently nuzzling the creature's head. Arf, arf. Not to get too excited, Stanberry. It's only a gala. Lady Weston, what is the meaning of this? Sir, you call me by that name, yet I had no idea who you are. Well, you should know that. I was not asking. Not bring a, a mutt with you. How odd, I seem perfectly capable of doing so a moment to go. Arf. Yes, this way, Stanberry. Any hands to shake, names to forget, that sort of bother? I prefer to be home before late, the pups need fed. Cordell moves across the room, her faithful dog in tow. It's funny. Nutley and Cassia stand at the entrance of the barbershop belonging to Arthur Nutley Sr. Nervous? Always, oh, yes. Huh. But are you more or less nervous than usual? Less nervous, more giddy, a good sort of nervous, I suppose. Now the enters, followed by Kasha. Is that him? He's coming this way. Spots his son from across the shop. Arthur, my goodness, is it really you? 
Father, I... Doctor's Navel began his sentence, interrupted by the barber throwing his arms around him, granting him a constricting hug. It's you, my boy. You're alive. The younger Arthur hesitates, surprised before returning the hug from his father. I, I am. I am. Does your mother know your sister? Unless they've read it in the paper, speaking of. I wrote something for you. He only hands his, hand, his father an envelope. Please read it. Sometime when I am not here. Of course I will. Kasha clears her throat. Pleased to meet you, sir. Kasha Belford. I think I didn't notice you. How do you know my son? Yeah, I hope he hasn't gotten himself in trouble. Arthur? In trouble? Hardly. Kasha and I are, well, you see that we're an item. Yes. Pauses for a moment before a grin appears on his face. Been busy. Come, sit. Had much to hear. <laughs> the old scientist ponders the table before him. Lights a cigarette. Mr. Templeton, you wish to speak with me? Yes. Do not worry. This won't take long. Out with it, then. Nerva Apperton... I, Richard Templeton, hereby tender my resignation. This is sudden. Assure you that it's not. I begin this great deal of thought. I tend to leave your services effective immediately. Very well. Will that be all? Will that be all? Is there anything else you need of me? No. On reflection, there's nothing I, else I need from you. She exits the greenhouse. Breathes a sigh of relief. Like, that's it. However long you work for someone, and that's what you get out of it. It's insane. Hunt waits in his cell. The days have passed by as the once captain of the temperance awaits his trial. This is horrid, isn't it? Not even a neighbor to keep me company. He speaks to himself in an empty hold, his own voice echoing through the walls. The stories I could have shared with them. Turn your hair white. I wonder. Could I do it all again? I suppose it's too late now. He continues his rumblings on a soul around to answer his pleas. Good. Nor should they hear. Oh, the air was cold. A flake and white captain made a pledge. Out in the ice, I made a claim and carved a course ahead. Of home I'll reach, a warmth near found, through sail to comfort sped, a hunger drew the desperate here. That such lonely souls were led. What did I do when steel hearts broke and courage did absond? I've led these souls, so help the gods, out of the pale beyond. Sign off. There's so many um, achievements going off right here, right now. Temperance. All right. Well, that puts us to the end of the Pale Beyond. Wow, that was that was good. I mean, there's some things with like the gameplay itself that were a little iffy and spotty in terms of either the UI not working or just kind of buggy. You know, when there are times where you know went to end the day but we could have still put stuff in and didn't, like pop up are you sure you don't want to things like that would be nice <laughs> i love this um maya jojo blue good girl good boy good boy uh, but all in all this was, this was really good would i play this again going down a different path probably not i like to keep the story where it was i think we made the decisions that we did and it worked out to how I think we wanted to see that story unfold. And on top of that, yeah, I think I think it worked out well. 
this was this was really good. Um, recommend your own playthrough of it. Maybe you can make dis different decisions than I did. Uh, um, let me just drop that down just a slight bit. Yeah, <laughs> it was like overpoweringly, overpoweringly loud. The accordion. Um, if these guys ever make another game like this, yeah, I'd, I'd be more than willing to check it out. Because um, it was a lot of fun. And it's short, um, comparatively to a lot of other ones. This is our longest session of it, which makes sense because it's a finale, and it just kept going and going. So there was not a good place to stop, which is a good thing to do. So... Um, so this is, this is good. So that was the Pale Beyond, um, I hope you enjoyed the series. I want to find another story style game, kind of like this, another small story game to play. So I'll be doing that over the next couple weeks, um, while these recordings go up. Um, and so hopefully I'll be able to continue a, a series right after this one. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.